Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Media True Dirt, and welcome back to Starfield. Where last time, we destroyed the Crimson Fleet, and as a result, the UC rewarded me with a ridiculously giant pile of money. Which I immediately spent doing up my ship a bit, but... Oh bloody hell, this thing is now ridiculous. Over two cocking thousand shield points, a ridiculously powerful pair of missile launchers at the front, and a fully upgraded Stroud Eklund bridge because I couldn't deal with Deimos's bridge. Okay, it wasn't symmetrical, I couldn't deal with it. And today, okay, I did say we were gonna get on with some Ryujin business, and we will, but um, yes, with my exciting sexy new ship in hand, uh, I want to test out just how powerful she actually is. And I think I know precisely how we can do that. Because, you see, I was looking through the mission journal, and I can't help but notice that, yes, many moons ago, I think possibly back in Hope Town, the bartender did tell me, hey, there's a distress call coming from Charybdis. You ought to go and check that out. And uh, I know I've seen a couple of people mention Charybdis down in the comments too. Like, you know, as a place I ought to go and check out. So, okay, I feel like that might be a nice thing to do today. Not least as, yes, Cryptus is basically right next door to where I am, and on top of that, she's level 65. Like, the toughest, nastiest system I'll have ever gone into. Though, yes, um, while I'm just moseying about in space for a second, you know how there's like, you know, a secret House Varun system somewhere, but no one knows where it is, because... Uh, even House Varun's own agents do not know where their home base is located. It's Serpentis, isn't it? It's just in cocking Serpentis. Like, it's not gonna not be in Serpentis. I literally just arrived in Serpentis, and straight away, we're running into Varun units. Like, right here, this is... Okay, so it turns out, yes, I'm pretty sure the cocking of Varun live here. And good luck getting through my shield systems, you stupid bastards. And even more interestingly, okay, there's a couple of, you know, deserted buildings down here now. Deserted Ecliptic, I've seen before. But deserted Freestyle Garrison, bare minimum, that might be, you know, a new skill magazine. So right, we're going down to visit that. Okay, down on the ground, also remember to re-recruit Barrett. We've got to deal with his business at some point. And uh, okay, this could actually be interesting because, yes, unfortunately... Gravity is high here, so, yeah. Jetpacking up's not gonna be the easiest thing in the world, and that's a pretty damn steep slope, so... Alright, this is gonna be a bit of a difficult approach, potentially. Here we go, this looks like, you know, a better approach. Possibly, yeah, there's a giant elevator. Okay, this is kinda cool. Like, you know, a proper mountaintop base with a proper approach and whatnot. Just, you know, maybe be a little bit careful. If there's only one approach, then, you know, if this place has been abandoned, then taken over by pirates or whatnot. Yeah, me and the pirates aren't friends anymore. They're going to be a lot nastier these days. Still, no sign of trouble at all. All right, have a poke about. This is a cool little location. There's also... Oh, cock, there's... Don't even scar. Sorry about that, Barrett. Like, when I start running, you should really start running too. Okay. Someone's, yes, mind up the place. Got it. Oh, hello, sexy. It's ecliptic mercs. Okay, those guys you can kill without even feeling bad about it. So, uh, yeah, just to pop you in the back of the head. You're going to stand up. You're going to be dead too. Pretty sure there was one around the back over here. You are currently a bit hidden. And this is a good gun. Right and there we go, up to level 47 as we just murder everybody. Beautiful. Which is very bloody convenient because, uh, yes indeed, 420 damage and that could be doubled and doubled again and doubled again some more. That's not really that much damage when you think about it. And uh, as for my shotguns, like 44 range, not that exciting. 21 range, even less so. But what if I was to, you know, max out ballistic, giving me 30% more range on all cocking ballistic weaponry? And more importantly, a little badge with a gun-toting octopus on it. Oh yeah, 27 range. Now that's a bit cocking better. And you're still at 420 damage because, John, that was the entire point. That upgrade didn't give you more power. It just gave you more range, but 
148 range is ridiculous. So, uh, okay, this is still, you know, rather good news. Arguably most of all for, yes, the coachman, because uh, the range beyond which these things just explode, uh, so uh, you can't shoot any further. That's always been the limiting factor on this old girl. Now that's a lot further. Oh, yeah. That is going to make this thing even more stupidly powerful. Oh, and inside the barracks, right. The people who were here, the Free Star, they didn't understand why they were stationed here. Captain says there's some kind of deadly alien menace, but I've never seen him, and I'm damn sure he hasn't either. So, right. They were here to investigate Varun, but they didn't tell the people on the ground that. Oh, and boo game of boo, I say, because yes, the skill magazine here is a grav jump fuel cost. Right, well, that's cocking meaningless, even if it wasn't 1%, which is even more cocking insulting. Meanwhile, the captain's log from the main building, right. These guys really think I don't know what's going on. I would never have made it this far if I didn't know what every single one of my men was doing at all times. I mean, seriously, even if I didn't, there's no way to hide the smell on their breath or that they've stopped serving potatoes in the mess hall. So, uh, right. Booze being brewed, presumably vodka, by the soldiers. So, uh, okay. These guys out here in the middle of nowhere, life was not good for them. And uh, yes, things started to get a bit lax on base. To the extent that, yes, if I wasn't still receiving supplies, I'd believe it if you told us, command had forgotten about us. So, uh, I skipped my last report, fully expecting to get an ass chewing, but nothing zip nada. I'm tired of lying to these men, they're some of the best I've had the pleasure of commanding, so I've got a plan to help with morale. Rolf is always tinkering on something, so I've gone ahead and asked him to rewire the emergency broadcast system. Instead of a siren that can be heard for miles, we're gonna have a party, and I know just where to find the hooch. So, right. They decided to have a, a massive a bootleg vodka party, and I'm deeply concerned based on, uh, yes, the evidence outside to the term, um, that alien creature that apparently lived around here. Possibly it actually did, because, uh, right. Moonshine. Claw marks. Blood. I feel like possibly, yes, the party drew the attention of uh, something they really didn't want to draw the attention of, actually. Oh, and speaking of which, game, please, tell me you're about to do what I think you're about to do. Okay. That is indeed some party music, apparently. Got some more storage keys, too. Pretty sure I've already cracked open that door. And if we step outside right, just like the note said, uh, all the speakers are now playing this song. So, uh, right, you can just, you know, have a tiny abandoned base party if that's what you want to do. Well, that's just bloody lovely. Right, that seems to be everything here. So just mosey on back to the ship. Let's be on our way. Yes, let's get back to our main destination. Charybdis, because we know for a fact somebody was sending a distress signal from here. And when I say, you know, was, yeah, it was several months ago. They could well be dead by now. Repeating emergency request. Facility crucible requires vital materials to sustain the mission. Transmitting coordinates on Charybdis 3. End of message. Okay. The crucible. Which does not ring a bell. I don't recall anybody mentioning a crucible to me. Hmm. I wonder if Ada's up to anything around here. Never met, but I've heard about her among the science circuit. Okay. Never mind. I've never heard of crucible, but by the sounds of it, Barrett has. Uh, someone by the name of uh, Ada, apparently. Though unfortunately, Barrett's not willing to, you know, open up more about this planet he apparently knows something about. Right, just mosey on in. Nice and careful. Hello there, robot. No trouble. Not planning to shoot anybody just yet. Hello, Tobias. Could you maybe, like, fill me in on what's going on here precisely? Because Barrett's not willing to. Chilling of unknown origin detected. Designated outsider. This is an undisclosed secret location. Please identify purpose or depart. Okay. Well, you're the guys who asked for help, okay? This one's on you. Acknowledging receipt of emergency request. Explanation deemed acceptable. Clearance granted to Crucible. Outsider will deliver 150 units of copper. Compensation will be dispensed. Tobias, stand down. 
We have a visitor. Reminder, deliver required material. End of conversation. This, this is incredible. For so long we hoped for any visit, and the day has finally arrived. Okay, so, right. As I say, you are a bit out of the way, though. Let's start off with, what the cock is Project Crucible? Oh dear, that's a surprisingly tricky question. I'm probably not the person to answer it, but it is a genuine pleasure to meet you. And Baron's not saying anything, despite the fact he apparently knew you were here because you appear to be ages, so... Okay, Barrett, I feel like you may have let the cat out of the bag a bit early, actually. Your arrival is truly an historic one, but many fear what it portends. The societies have closed their doors and are arguing about what to do, while the rest hide to see which way the wind blows. Franklin would know what to do. He's the oldest among us. You should talk with him. Okay, so... Right. Something's a bit... weird with this society. And yes, as she was saying, uh, most of the Yama um, societies appear to have locked their doors. Here we go, Franklin. Hello there, good sir. Let's get some answers from you if we can. When your ship landed, I feared the robots would shoot you on sight. I am greatly relieved that they let you enter our community. But you come during a delicate time. Everyone will seek to use your arrival to further their own ends. Okay, so, yep, one, love the accent, and... Uh, right, something weird's going on here. What precisely is going on? Where to begin? Ah, maybe an introduction? I am Franklin Delano Roosevelt, leader of the Pragmatist Society. Right, so, uh, oh... John, you know the UC does cloning. Bloody hell, UC, could you stop just, you know, doing nightmare science for just five minutes? Bringing people who have been dead for millennia back to life, not cool. You see, I was an American president. Well, not literally, but in a sense I was. Everyone that lives here are clones. Some of us are clones of the greatest figures of history, and others... Well, we don't rightly know. When we die, and some of us die quite often, we are brought back. I cannot imagine how strange this must sound to an outsider. Yep, strange is a word for it, all right. Okay, you say that, Barrett. You're the one who had apparently, like, heard of Ada, and she was like a known commodity back on Jemison, but fine. So... I'm gonna be honest, buddy. Like, this is not my first Bethesda game. You often get, you know, a very bloody odd mission. The USS Constitution, Superhuman Gambit, something of that nature. Really, this does not faze me that much. But yes, just for a second, let's focus on... Oh, I was about to say the important thing, or what's going on, my places, etc, etc, but... When you say important historical figures... By any chance, like, you know, are there many much older than you? Like, I don't know, people who might be wearing really cool old school outfits that I could, you know, steal off them or something because... Uh, right. Right, 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 right. We need to get ourselves some cool historical dresses, damn it. The robots clone us for a reason. Their so-called mission. But what that is and what we should do about it is something the societies disagree about. Sometimes violently. It's best you meet with the other societies, and after, I promise I'll explain the pragmatist's position on matters. Right. So by the sounds of it, yes, these guys live here, but they're not in charge. They're just being brought back over and over and over again by the robots. Whoever controls the robots, they're the people responsible for this, but... In all fairness, this has got the UC's fingerprints all over it. We know these guys uh, do cloning experiments. So, all right, just hang about. Mosey back outside. Uh, everyone's now uh, come outside and, uh, oh my goodness, we've got cocky cowboys. Oh, and this isn't who we're supposed to be talking to right now, but um, Amelia Earhart's just chilling out here. Marvelous. Your ship, she's a beauty. It travels the stars, right? Tell me. What's it like out there? 
I mean, I'm gonna be honest, most of it's pretty bloody empty. It's all procedurally generated, Amelia. You're not really missing that much. Has anyone ever told you you're a poet? <laughs> my name's Amelia Earhart. When I first woke up in this place, in my head, I knew all about my namesake, her life and her accomplishments. But I also knew how to fly a starship, reactor limits, thrust acceleration vectors and everything. In my mind's eye, I can imagine flying out there, touching heaven itself. And yet, cruelly, here I sit. Okay. So, yes. By any chance, do you want to come with me? Because I'd be 100% okay with you being like, you know, uh, my new pilot or navigator or whatever. <laughs> Am I that transparent? Listen, I know you owe me nothing at all, but I would do anything to get off of here. I know the societies want who knows what from you for who knows why, and I don't want to get involved in any politics. I just want, for my single self, a chance to explore. Okay, so, right. Come back later, grab you on the way out, gotcha. I... you won't regret it, I... thanks. And just yes, indeed, I can't deny, you're dealing rather well with, you know, the big philosophical mess of uh, being somebody else. Like knowing you're not the original you. Everyone's dealing with this really well, actually. No, I don't. I consider myself a most ardent admirer of hers. She feels like... family. Distant family. I like to think we both share a kindred spirit of adventure, though. She broke so many barriers in her life. I would love the same opportunity one day. You know what, Amelia? I like you. You're coming with me when we're done here. Okay, step one, yeah, figure out what all the societies want. So, right, next up is Genghis Khan. Well, this is just delightful Bethesda nonsense, isn't it? And okay, by the Luke Silvic, yes, our champ Genghis doesn't enjoy hanging out in town. He's out and about, and maybe going a hunting, or maybe he's just, you know, a glitched out of position. It's a Bethesda game, it's hard to tell. Stranger, weapons out, they come! Okay, he's definitely sp Oh, blimey, there's cocking spiders! Right, okay, don't use the explosive stuff. No explosive stuff. Barrett, maybe like, assist with this. Barrett, could you maybe like, take out the spiders? Alright, they're attacking Genghis Khan, which is bad, I think. There we go. Right. So Genghis Khan protects this society from spiders, apparently. The woman from the stars. Come to see me. And you're not afraid to get your hands dirty. I guess the world out there is not so different than here. Genghis Khan, a pleasure to meet you. I feel like, yes, Genghis Khan wouldn't say a pleasure to meet you. And Jess, um, you are a terrible butcher according to history, like, a really bad person who did a lot of really bad things. My namesake, yes, a terrible, terrible person. But me, I'm really just a lowly prisoner, stuck on this pitiful planet. I am pleased that the dangers out here are of no concern to you. You cannot be fully human if you trap yourself behind walls. Okay, so... Yes, he's here like protecting the town, he doesn't like being inside it. And yes, yeah, so he claims uh, he's like, you know, uh, different from historical Genghis Khan. Genetically the same, presumably, but grown up in a different environment. So Franklin told you of us, oh, that we're clones? Some of us think that makes us special. That the deeds of our namesakes are somehow ours. But that is blind arrogance. We are just people. Same as you. Same as anyone. And that's true. If that's your opinion, then why would you like, you know, take Genghis's name? and dress in the style you're currently dressed. Why wouldn't you forge a new identity? I never really thought about that. Surprising indeed. Ah, but all this talk gets us nowhere. Too many of the others grovel at the feet of the damned robots. 
trying to play the roles in a broken game. The Renegades will not submit. And one day, we will be free. Okay, so he's a bit annoyed at being, you know, trapped in this experiment. And uh, fair enough, to be honest, that's reasonable. And in which case, yes, like... To what extent are you actually a prisoner here? Like, if you tried to go too far away, would the robots come and hunt you down? Or like, you know, maybe just kill you and then make a new one? A prison of the mind and the body. Crucible holds out a throne and says, Obey, and it is yours. But thrones are meant to be taken, not handed to you by a machine. But it is a tantalizing lie that keeps the others in line. Okay, maybe not as simple as that. By the sounds of it, yes, there's something else going on here. Like a game built into the experiments. I have died a dozen deaths trying to find a way out of Crucible. You get too far or disobey too much, then death. Crucible holds our lives in its hands. But now the robots have made a grave mistake. You, you can go where none of us can. You hold our future in your hands and all the societies know it. I propose this. The robots come from someplace far to the east. We call it the facility, a place none of us can get to. But with you and your starship, it would be easy. Go there and break our shackles. Set us free. Okay. So Genghis Khan wants me to, yes, like, you know, just to go and shut down the robot so these guys could just do their own thing. Which in all fairness feels reasonable. This isn't like, you know, a prison that's keeping people because they've committed a crime. They're just being kept here by some weird UC experiment or whatnot. So, okay. It feels weird to say, but I am suddenly feeling somewhat sympathetic to Genghis Khan. Oh, and next up. Right, so, um, yes, remember how I was just saying maybe we could get our hands on some cool historical dresses or whatnot? Okay, um, if there's, you know, ultimately a choice as to who gets to live and who gets to die, and thus I get to loot their corpses. I'm gonna be honest, it's not looking good for you. I had hoped you would visit me. Good. Know that you stand before Queen Amanirinas of the Kush. Queen of a dead kingdom, on a dead world. But I earned my name, and even the sands of time cannot take it from me. Right. So yes, Genghis Khan wants to separate himself from his historical forebear. You're very much embracing it. But yes, I'm guessing if I tell her that and say, no, you're a distinct person who's just sharing genetics and possibly memories. You walk our land a few footsteps and think you know everything. If you don't believe me, no, you are not alone. Some clones deride me behind my back. I know this, but I feel in my bones that I am a Manirinas for true. The great and the terrible to those who would oppose me. I remember things no one has told me. Memories of faces, betrayers, Lovers, allies, and enemies, and the smells, the right scent, and I close my eyes, and I can picture all of it so vividly, it aches my heart, my home, my kingdom. Okay. I'm not denying, some of that may be true, though also because there's absolutely no way to verify it, you could just be imagining some of this stuff, but um, yeah, we can disprove this pretty easily, which is, we know for certain, if you die, we just clone another one. So, in theory, there's nothing to stop us, if I could just, you know, hack the robots or whatever, from cloning multiple versions of you simultaneously. Now, if there's multiple yous, you can't all simultaneously be like, you know, the reincarnation 
of an ancient queen. Doesn't make sense, you can't all be the same person. Therefore, you must be different people. Therefore, none of you can be the real one. Because each of you invalidates the other. So, okay. I'm definitely feeling like, yeah, I'm agreeing with Genghis Khan right now. We are the ones who will take our rightful place in these settled systems. To bring in a new glorious age. And break the endless cycles of oppression and greed. Okay, so right, this will be that mission that Yas was mentioned to me. So, okay, Genghis just wants to get out, do his own thing. You've got something much bigger in mind by the sounds of it. So many scoff at the mission. Before we are reborn here, there are words all of us are told. That we are the chosen. We are meant to better ourselves. To learn, grow, and thrive. All of us represent the greatest figures in our history. Who better to lead the settled systems to a new golden age? Yeah, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not feeling like this is a good idea, or indeed remotely practical. So, Genghis wants to get out and just do his own thing. You want to get out, but be declared Queen of the Galaxy or something. Very peculiar. Franklin, let's get, you know, your take on it. So, you have heard from the other societies. I must confess I'm very curious what an outsider thought of them and their positions. You might be the first objectively neutral party we've ever come across. Okay, so yes, as weird as it is to say, I'm siding with Genghis Khan by the sounds of it. And you'd let Genghis go free. He's caused more misery in Crucible than any other five clones combined. Given a chance, I shudder to think what he'd do if he was let loose. <sighs> the facility has gathered some of the most obstinate and dangerous personages throughout history. It has told them that they should lead in a golden age via whatever means they see appropriate. Setting us all loose, part or as a whole, would invite disaster. We are barely fit to lead ourselves. Okay, but like it's definitely not right to just keep you all in prison here, exclusively because uh, in theory you might do something bad at some point in the future. This is a terrible argument, Franklin. It is evident that the facility is decaying. It is both unsustainable and unwise for us to fix and maintain the status quo. Our community must be weaned off the machines. Learn how to build, grow, and govern ourselves. Allowed to raise families so we can pass our lessons to the next generation. And to die when our allotted time is finished. One day we will be worthy of going to the stars. We are just not there yet. Okay. But when you say, yes, raising families, if you can't do it now, or like you haven't so far, that would suggest, you know, as part of the cloning process, you were left infertile, which would mean that, you know, you couldn't raise families. This feels like an important objection here. Yes, and not to be indelicate, not for lack of try. Are we even human in this state? We have no future. Only the past. Okay, so... Right. When you say your plan is to, you know, set up your own society, and then uh, try and slowly work your way forward uh, into future generations, you literally can't make those future generations. Like, your plan inherently can't succeed. It's done in one generation without the cloning, so... Uh, right, this is a terrible plan. I'm 100% all in on Genghis Khan. If for no other reason than because, uh, yes, like, if Genghis chooses to leave, uh, you could just stay. Like, the people who want to go, could go. The people who want to stay, can stay. Like, basically, everybody gets what they want. Oh, the cowboy wants a word before I go, apparently. Hello there, buddy. What have you got to say? Listen, it's not safe to talk here. It's about Roosevelt. There's something you need to know. Okay. Apparently, Roosevelt's got a secret or something. There's a, well, cave just outside town. No chance of us being listened in on. Please, come as quick as you can. Ideally, before you go to the facility. 
Okay, well, this is just bloody delightful nonsense. Here we go, buddy. Let's have a lovely chat about yes, whatever it is Roosevelt's hiding from me. You came. I, I just can't take a chance. These clones, they, they're psychotic, crazy. If they find out, I'm sorry. I, I just can't take the chance. Okay. Something is, yes, definitely going on beyond what I was expecting here. I'm not Wyatt Earp. I wish. God, how I wish I was. I was cloned off a monster. America's first serial killer. H.H. H. Holmes. If you go to the facility, I know you'd find out. And if you let any of these bloodthirsty maniacs know, they'd kill me. But no, that wouldn't be the end. Every time my new clone would appear, death, torture, pure hell. I'm afraid it's you or me. I'm going to kill you. Okay. Um, you don't need to do that. Why would you do that? And also, is there, like, no secret about Roosevelt? Did you just say that to lure me here? Okay, let's, like, you know, just do a nice little persuade before we start killing anyone. I'm not wearing the right gear for this, to be honest. I just don't see a way out. Right, so... Okay. You know what? You can choose who you want to be. Maybe you've got a bit of dodgy DNA, but that doesn't matter. Alright, you can still be a hero, though... Maybe stick on the, uh, green. Also, I would just win. Like, really cocking easily. I don't want to die. Okay, that's a good start. You can trust me. I'm not going to tell anybody. I want to believe you. I do. And just one more. Oh, dear. There's no green. Oh, that's, that's not good, actually. Come on, Wyatt. Be a hero. I can wish it a million times. But it don't make it so. I don't want to do this. Goodbye. For both of us. Right, so... Does anyone know why he just exploded? I'm just going to, like, leave him alone. Barrett, just leave him alone. We don't need to do this and... I think Barrett just cloned himself, by the way. Right, now there's two Barretts. There's also... Well, someone tossed a grenade. Right, well, this is... This is all very peculiar. You know what? He's wearing a nice outfit. I'm sorry about this. I wanted to, like, you know, talk you down, yeah, but... Then there was just another explosion. Well, that was bloody weird. Right, so some of these people may not necessarily be who they think they are. And uh, what's interesting is, yeah, like, you know, the people who have been cloned, it's not just great leaders, necessarily. It's all sorts of weird people of note, with all sorts of really varied skill sets. So, right. Let's mosey on over to this here facility and see what's going on. Oh, and blimey, right. The facility is literally on the far continent. I can see why you guys couldn't make it. Also, I just arrived, and um, right, there's uh, hunting... Uh, oh, blimey, I don't like you. 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 Barra! Open cocking fire. I do not like the maggot moss. You can just go away. All right, down you go. Oh, those, those make my skin crawl. I don't appreciate these at all, actually. No, 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 no. Where do you think you're going? All right, no cocking escape for maggot moss. I don't like you. So, okay, no robots outside or anything. Chair yeah, by the Luxiomet. There's other facilities nearby, too. Right, keep on keeping on. Downstairs, just a bit of pest control to kick us off by the Luxie of it. And yeah, this here will be why the facility's been breaking down. Infestation in the robot control centre. Gotcha. Right, just a basic space roaches for the time being. But, hang about. There might be some... Oh, it's the cocking maggots again. No, 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 no. Okay, just, just keep firing. I don't appreciate maggots. Don't appreciate these maggots at all. Don't like this. I do not cocking like this. Right, if it's not robots, go over to uh, this thing. It's a bit stronger. Everything's going to be fine. And also, uh, right. At some point, there were people maintaining this facility. But not any longer. And here we go. Even though we're on the far side of the cocking planet from the camp, confinement is driving me crazy. 
they have to die underground. I think Genghis is right. Escape is the only option. Okay, there might have been more clones in this facility too. And yeah, there's just more diary pages dotted about. So they broke onto the top floor, found a spaceship, the Galathea, mostly stripped down, but comm system was operational. Message from another ship called the Beagle. We played the transmission, just raw noise. We'll try and go back tomorrow. So, right. Somebody was in here trying to, you know, fix up the various machinery. And here we go, more bugs dead ahead. Are you on? I think you might be on a lower floor, actually. Right, we've just got a handful of... I don't appreciate the maggot moors, by the way. I don't appreciate them at all. All right, just take down cocking everything. I use my powers to see what's going on. There you cocky go. Off into physics with you. Oh, and here's interesting. Anonymous last words and more people just saying, yes, we're trapped, etc, etc. But, okay. I pray you find this, brother of my blood. Do not trust Bill Hickok. He is not who he seems. Why do I get the feeling that might be Roosevelt? Like, Roosevelt's not Roosevelt or something. Also, I'm going to be honest because, yes, my knowledge of American folk history is not amazing. I just googled the name, and he's like a famous outlaw and gunslinger and whatnot. But I didn't know that, so... Right. As I suspected, it might be uh, more than Wyatt, who's not who he thinks he is. Ooh, and I think we've got some, yes, nastier creatures up ahead. Like, I'm pretty sure I just saw... Blimey, sorry about that, Space Barrett. I'm pretty sure I just saw, like, you know, a, a level 80-something. Barrett, I'd step back if I were you. My plan is just to, like, nuke that cocking room. Actually, it's just uh, keep on keeping on. Just keep on nuking. Hang about you, the... Yep! 85 legendary. Don't appreciate this. Don't appreciate this. Don't appreciate this. Don't appreciate this. Just nuke everybody. All right, you just stay down there while we, like, you know, nuke all the things. No, seriously, I do not appreciate these cocky maggot moors. So, right, just keep on murdering and... Oh. Security on lockdown. Security override code required to reboot system. Okay, we're going to be needing to get a code from somewhere. Here's Ada Lovelace's diary. Years of trial and error, I've attained proficiency enough to call myself a programmer. It's amazing how far things have advanced from my memories. So, right, pretty much what the robot just said. Facilities on lockdown, she needs a security override code. And yes, this part of the facility was closed to us until Genghis set off his explosions. Even here, there's nothing of the sort. If only I had more time to think, but monsters lurk in every hall now. So, Genghis escaped by blowing holes in everything, but in doing so, yeah. He left the facility open to bugs. So I'm guessing, yeah, the real secret's going to be buried down here. We just need to keep on keeping on, find that security card. So okay, at this point, the game's saying, yeah, choose which society to give the facility information to. But I feel like we're not done here yet, actually. Here we go. Just step into the, yeah, restricted wing computer. So security override code. Don't have that, but I do have the ability to at least attempt a manual override. And I've got some security, so... Gosh darn it, never mind. Right. Need the code. Can't do a manual override, and maybe if I had enough security like Master, we could. And I'm guessing maybe... Well, actually, you know what? Why would the guys back at the camp have that? The robots yeah. might mind... And you know what? I'm not going to hold it against, you know, alternative at this side of the planet, Genghis Khan, that he kind of, you know, caused the bugs to eat everyone. He had no reason to think there were gigantic maggot monsters outside. He was just trying to escape, damn it. So we need the security override code. But there is no such thing in Crucible. But this other ship, the Beagle, now that might have what we need. Ah, that's true. The Beagle might be, you know, a supply ship attached to the facility. This facility is secret and way out the way. If the Beagle knew where to find it, the Beagle must be in some way attached to the facility. Gotcha. Oh, a mega flipping nificent. It's good old Ada who's going to help us track down the ship. So we did come from a spaceship. Of course we did. And there's another out there. What was the Beagle? Why did she and the Galathea part? 
But all of that in time. First, we must find her. She's not in this star system. I would have spotted her. Hmm. The radio telescope! It has a default position. It resets every morning. I always wondered why point at Bell 5. <sighs> Petty frustration I've dealt with for years. Perhaps the facility looks for her sister. Yes! Yes, it makes sense! I can send you the coordinates. The Bell Star system is not far. The facility communicates via a secure frequency. When you arrive, tune into that. Alright, bloody cleverator, gotcha! Here we go, Bell. By funny coincidence, one of very few systems I've not actually been to yet. And there we go. The moment we arrive, uh, we've got something in front of us. So slow it down. Scan for the frequency. And there we go. Right. So that's the old ship, broken down and long since gone. But we've now got her route. Potentially, this is where, you know, the supplies being delivered to the Crucible were coming from. Gotcha. Right, so that's taking me down to, yes, another unknown system, though this one is a bloody hell a bit out the way. Even my mega ship can't get there in one go. So, okay, just head there via our cheaper. Shouldn't be too uh, difficult to do. Oh, and apparently the beagle's here. I'm going to be honest, I thought we'd already found the beagle. What was the ship we just found a second ago? Because I thought we just found the beagle. Possibly that was the Galathea, I'm not sure. Okay, head down, a scan for trouble. But, by the sounds of it, yeah, all quiet. Unless robots. Keep your eyes open for robots, potentially. And, oh, never mind, robots, just as I was expecting. No, 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 none of that, please. Right, by the looks of it, yes, a scientific or medical vessel. Right, this will be the science support ship that, you know, dealt with the whole cloning business. Okay, a few more robots and turrets down, and we might finally be able to get some answers. Dr. Zhao's computer. Okay, so the facility is full of uh, vicious predators. Uh, true. The amount of resources we need just to provide basic protection is ludicrous. So, uh, okay. When Dr. Peskinder passed, it fell to me to reconfigure the experiment. Otto von Bismarck was apparently supposed to be there, but, um, right. We've not seen a him present, though... Uh, counterweight. Even then he would be hard to stop. These aren't just random historical figures. Uh, they're supposed to be like counterweights to each other. Which isn't how like people work but okay right well this just gets weirder and weirder. And on another terminal round the corner right this might be why Otto von Bismarck isn't present. The Galathea and the Beagle. We should have boarded it and taken their samples. The whole plan requires all the specimens. How can we hope to engineer a golden age with only half the test? Some people are missing because, yes, this isn't even the full experiment as it's supposed to run. And then finally, right, end of the ship, presumably the control room. Well, one, we can figure out what's going on here, and I'm guessing, right, the Crimson Fleet. The experiment was, yes, ruined by an incursion in space. Gotcha. And then we can just grab that code. Brilliant. Oh dear. I think we may have just um, activated some uh, robots on the way out, by the way. I'm really sorry about this. I, I didn't mean to steal your data or whatnot. Right, maybe just um, make a run for it. I feel like we can outrun medical robots. They're not very fast. Outsider, this is King Khan. Know that there are urgent matters on Crucible. If you could see me, I would be grateful. Not 100% sure how Genghis Khan is able to transmit to my ship. Or like, how he knows I'm in orbit. But you know what? In this mission, just don't ask questions. Just go with it. Amanorinus has sent an ultimatum. Either we meet and resolve things, or she will attack the renegades. Franklin may be allied with her as well. This talk requires your presence. When you say talk, I can't deny I wouldn't object to them being dead so I can loot the corpses. Like, I'm not a bad person or anything, but I do want to loot her dress. We are meeting them under truce, which means no bloodshed, no matter how disrespectful they may be. 
but after we meet, come what may. All right, now we're cocky talking. Right, just in case we can sort this out, maybe like, you know, nice business suit, handful of persuasion drugs, etc, etc. Oh yeah, they're literally waiting outside. We cannot allow the renegades to leave here and embark on who knows what terror they have in mind. I give you one last chance. Renounce him and pledge to support the mission. If you support me instead of this brute, Roosevelt will stand down too. So, no, 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 the renegades deserve to be free, because this is very literally a prison, and they've committed no crime. Then the streets will run red. And Roosevelt, you are not one to start a battle. Always you prattle about peace between us. Where is your peace now? Hmm. Or is it just honeyed lies you spread for your own? purposes. To you, this isn't just about escaping. You would destroy Crucible too, wouldn't you? I would free all of you from this prison if I could. And the cleanest way to do so is tear it all down. Then you cannot be allowed to succeed. There's nothing left to say. Right. So, come on. How about we, yes, repair it and free the renegades? Everybody wins, and you get to stay here with your catastrophically stupid plan of sustaining society without cloning when none of you is capable of having children. If Genghis were willing, under those conditions, I would not take up arms against you. You would seriously stay here? In this prison, Roosevelt? This is our home, and if we're allowed, we can make it a worthy place to live. Then, I swear, I will leave Crucible in your care. Then the pragmatist will not stand in your way. I am done with all this negotiating. Prepare yourself, Genghis. It is finally done. All the sly maneuvers and spying on each other. Now all of our dreams are out in the open. We just need to fight to make them real. And more importantly, I get myself a really nice dress. Brilliant. All right, so we've got to... Oh, blimey, it's all about to go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I need some drugs first. I just need, you know, my fighting drugs before we start fighting. Want a quick can of blend. Lovely. Right, who are we taking out here? You're a believer. You are, hang on, you're the important one here, you're the important one, just, oh, okay, you're a bit, never mind, you're not that tough, down you go, and more importantly, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, oh, oh, now we're cocky talking, right, we've got a tiny bit more murder to do, yeah, you're also, you're apparently dead, good, 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 uh, and I think the job is done, marvellous. Okay, next up, over to Ada, who I'm guessing could crack the code for me. There is a standard cipher used by the facility. It took me many years and, well, lifetimes to overcome. And now, the mysteries of the facility await you. I pray you choose what befalls us wisely. You know what, Ada? You're a cook and star. When me and Amelia leave, you can come too if you want. So, okay, back downstairs to where we once were, just now we can actually crack open the final section. And there we go, she opens up, just check for trouble. Okay, not seeing it yet, but yes, I'm concerned I might be about to, you know, learn something here that might make me rethink my plan a bit. Oh, hang on, we've got... There's clones! Like, you know, clones of... Well, actually, I'm not sure who of. The entire facility appears to be being run by one guy. It's just hard to say who that guy is, precisely. Right, just be a bit careful of the water. It's a bit on the dangerous side, so don't spend too long in there. Keep on keeping on. I also see a turret. Lovely. Right. Probably best we just start, yes, nuking the area. Some of these clones are, you know, somewhat higher level than others. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I think this might be, um, as it turns out, significantly larger in scale than I was expecting. There's like, you know, 
a lot of cooking uh, rooms over here. Like, the idea seems to have been, yes, like, a ridiculous, silly amount of cloning going on. Also, John, how many times with the explosive shotgun? Okay, we've got a handful of computers at the end of this room, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, they're a bit garbled. So, uh, arrived on the Galathea, summing is real, uh, experiment within an experiment. So, okay, we can start making some assumptions here, but we might not get definite answers. Still, goodbye, Wild Bill. We know he was showing up at some point, but no longer. And potentially, yes, actually, hang on. Nature versus nurture. That might have been the entire point all along. It was just, you know, a much more philosophical experiment. Figuring out whether someone with the same DNA as a historical figure would turn out the same way over and over again or not. Speaking of which, yes, Holmes. H.H. Holmes, the guy who wasn't Wyatt. So, right, know who he was, or what he did, terrified a nation. Will he do it again? There's something, be a serial killer, tragedies, not directly. So, right, that's precisely what this experiment was trying to figure out. Whether you could perfectly predict someone's future based on their genetic code, and, uh, by the sounds of it, yeah. In some cases, uh, to some extent, in others, uh, not at all. Would you believe it just varies person to person? Ah, but then again, uh, right, on the computer next door, Earth is something, government's fumble and Epley, something, something, something. Right, the other terminal did say an experiment within an experiment. It's possible some people were attempting to, you know, literally create amazing new super leaders, and other people were just here for the nature versus nurture discussion. And speaking of experiments and experiments, right, the last entry. As contrary, think, no solution, if the clones are out with the how to reproduce on, neutralize safety protocols, right. Various people may have been running various experiments, but one of them was going to be, will people rise up against the machines? Or will they just, you know, obey the rules of the game as laid down to them by the robots? And uh, once again, in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Okay, I think over in the background, Barrett's just finishing off the last of the turret. So, thanks to me, like, we've pretty much reached the end. So, right, one at science crate. Well, that's cocking useless game, dear oh flippin' dear. But here we flippin' go. Facility data core together with a key so we can get in and out. Lovely. Here we go. Reboot and restore current mission parameters. Reboot and choose a new super admin. Or full clans. Okay, not that last one. That one will kill everybody. Then again, that will get me all the outfits. No, don't kill everyone just for the fashion. And then, right. Super admin. So, aha. Make Genghis Khan a super admin. Brilliant. So, right. Under those circumstances, uh, yes, he can leave the society functioning for Roosevelt, which he promised he'd do. So, in which case, right. Genghis Khan, here you go. You are an answer to our prayers. This long imprisonment is over. I will honor my pledge and let Franklin stay here and look after the facility. But everyone can leave Crucible at any time, thanks to you. This feels like a good solution. Aside from the fact he might be about to, like, you know, go and do some Genghis Khaning in the galaxy. Which might be bad, it's hard to say. Soon the renegades will leave this planet. But we will always burn a candle to you, outsider. Enough talk. The galaxy awaits. And there we go. Money, XP, etc, etc. And uh, I really hope we run into you down the line. That would be marvellous. But hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we go anywhere, Amelia, would you by any chance like to join my crew instead of Genghis's? The great news is that with the renegades in charge, I can get out of here. What do you say? Will you let me join you? Oh, you are more than welcome to come along. Brilliant. Okay, there is, however, yes, one slight downside here, which is she's just significantly worse at piloting than Sam is. Like, Sam's just superior. And you can't actually stack those, because, yeah, if you've got two people with piloting... It's just the better bonus that gets applied. So, uh, 
it's really weird you would give me Amelia Earhart and she would be worse at piloting than a character who you literally just get given right at the start of the game who is a main companion. That's such a weird choice, Starfield. Bare minimum, she does get to like, you know, bum about on the ship, even if she doesn't have a job yet. Still, with the Crucible all wrapped up, how about we call it a part there? But next time, okay. It's gonna be one of two things, because either we're getting back to the Ryujin business, or alternatively, yes, I have noticed that uh, Barrett's been asking to speak a few times, so it's possible he wants us to get on with his companion mission. So one of those two coming up very, very soon indeed. Hopefully, you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Starfield. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.